Take care. Thanks for coming into the live stream. Carry on my wayward son. Tuned by Kansas. A lot of fun. Had a little bit of te technical difficulties trying to run this a few minutes ago. We're trying it again. Uh, okay, jumping right in. I notice I do not have a third fret dot. So we're starting on A, fifth fret. Fifth fret of the low E string. Uh, I'm going A, back to G on the third fret, then A again. Uh, the tempo is approximately somewhere around 130. It's eighth notes, so uh, just uh, uh, low E quarter notes every beat. This is at 130. Eighth notes, I double. So we're looking at something like one and two, one and two. That's our eighth notes. We can slow it a bit down for learning it, but one and two, one and two. And then C is on the and of beat two. That'll be the third fret of your A string, fifth string. Remember, I don't have a third fret dot, so just be aware if you're looking at this guitar, my first dot is the fifth fret. So, A to G, back to A to C. Pretty easy, right? One and two and. Uh, that C is going to be, it's an eighth note tied to a quarter note, so it means it's going to be held for a beat and a half, so we don't do anything for beat three. One and two and three. Uh, hello, Star Blaster. One, one and two and three, and then on beat four, we're going to go A again, that fifth fret, to G. One and two and three, four and two, ready, go. Two, one more time. Pretty easy. Measure one. Measure two starts on the A again, but we're going to go to D. It's the same fret but the fifth, uh, fifth fret also, fifth string. Gives us an A to a D. One and, that is a dotted uh, quarter note, so which is basically the same value we had, not basically, it is the same value we had on the C. Remember we said the C was an eighth note tied to a quarter, which is the same value as a dotted quarter. Again, don't get too hung up in that, but we're holding it for the same length of time. So that means we're gonna go one and two, one and two, one and two, and then on three, we're going to move and go E, so that's the 5th fret for, the uh, 7th fret, sorry, of your 5th string, to G, the 5th fret, sorry, 7th fret of your 5th string, this is an E, to the 5th fret of your 4th string for a G, E, G. On this will be beat 3 and, so we went 1 and 2, 3 and, so notice I'm playing the A to D back here because I measure one. Right, because that was how I ended measure one. One and two and three, four and. So that's, I'm just dropping my third finger down. And then I'm gonna go E, G. Now there is a little slide there, which we're gonna incorporate. I sometimes like to teach it without the slide, so we're paying attention to playing it in time, and then we bring the slide back in later. Uh, so, one and two, three and. One and two, three and. So if I add the slide, one and two, three and. We'll put a metronome on here again in a minute and see how I would practice that. But again, a lot of times with slides and like any kind of little um, uh, grace note we'll refer to, like, uh, I like to add them in after, because otherwise the grace note can start affecting with playing it in time, and we don't want to do that. Okay, uh, so one and two and three, four and one and two, three and, three and, and then here is beat four of measure two. We're going to go E. That seventh fret, D the fifth fret, back to C on the third fret. And this is two sixteenths and an eighth. Four E and. And I'm gonna pick that down, up, down. Down picking the rest of it, I am gonna go down, up, down here because of the speed. Now there's gonna be there's gonna be a little bit of a you can either stretch it. you'd go pinky, second finger, or there's potentially going to be a little bit of a slide as you get back to that C. Uh, so all together, one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and. 
measure one and two together. Uh, at the full tempo that we started with in the beginning here. It's a little bit fast at that tempo, right? Let's slow it down. That's at one, I have that at 130. Let's go, let's go to 90. Let's drop it back a bunch. Now that time. Yeah, so a couple different ways to play that. I'll leave that up to you however you like it with the with the slide or potentially picking it with the three different fingers. It's up to you. And then we're almost done. It's a four measure, uh, no, it's just three measure riff, which is kind of makes it unique. One and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and. Then we're going to go the D, back to the D on the fifth fret, to G, so fifth fret of your fifth string, to the G, third fret of your sixth string. And that's an eighth note to a dotted quarter again, so the same kind of rhythm we had in the measure before where we had to go. Remember the A to D? Started measure two. So one and two, and then we're gonna go the D again, but I'm gonna use my pinky because I have to come back to the second fret of my low E string for an F sharp. Also an eighth to a dotted quarter. So same rhythm. One and two, three and four. And again with a metronome. One and two, three and four. You could down pick them all. All of a sudden I'm down upping, I don't know why. You could just go your third finger too and stretch back. Doesn't matter. Whole riff. kind of cool about the next part of this tune and you have to listen to the tune to hear what the drums do in that first part versus what they do in this next part because it switches to 12-8. So the first part was in 4-4 measure of 3 which is again a little different right because we tend to hear things a lot of times in 2 or 4 uh, but in this case it's actually in 3 and uh, oh you know what let me just make sure one thing really quick here because I didn't open up the chat just to make sure the chat's open. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at what the what happens in the 12-8 time because it's kind of cool. Um, so the metronome's going to stay the same tempo and I'm going to listen to the tune to see if it actually stays that same tempo as far as the metronome concerned because it's going to have a very different feel and the drummer is treating it very differently because it's now 12-8. So now, if, if I leave the metronome where it was, well, I have it at 90 just because we were practicing it slow. I'll just leave it s slow for a minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Or triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. 1, 2, 3. We would have that feel. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2. 3. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. So that, and then now, so. I, I talked about this in the last video that what was the one we did? I did one recently in 1282. Uh, instead of counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you may find it easier to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 twice because the 10, 11, 12 starts not ringing off the tongue so easily. Uh, but basically, what we're doing is we're going 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3. We're hitting this on 1 and 3, the low E. 1, 2, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we're going to hit it again on. Uh, is seven. Oh, wait, now nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. No, ten and twelve. No, sorry, nine, and then it would be ten and twelve. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, the ten and the twelve are actually going to be the E power chord. I'm playing first finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string, third finger on the ninth fret of the ninth, ninth fret of the fourth string for a B, <laughs> in a B, E power chord. Now there's two guitars going on here, and one is going, it's just playing barred across the 14th and the 12th, I guess the 12th here for this first part. Now that's a D and a G, that's strings three and four. That D and G 
I could also play on 7 and 8 on strings 2 and 3. If I put it together, I have an E minor 7th chord. So we could do it together. That would give us basically the sound of guitar 2 and the sound of guitar 1. Put it together. So that's probably what I would play if I was just playing it by myself. So that E minor 7th, if you don't know that chord, looks like your power chord. And then, but this first finger has to bar the fret. So if you're not, haven't played for very long, that is a little bit difficult. But again, you can just play the power chord and leave out this top part. Um, the second finger would be on the eighth fret of your second string to give us a G. And the first finger, because it's barring the seventh fret of the third string, gives us a D. That's what makes it E minor seventh. And again, not to get too technical, but E, F, G, A, B, C, D, oops, sorry, ah, 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 is seven notes higher. What's E minor seven? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So remember, we said on one you play the E, and on three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again on nine, the chord on ten, and again on twelve. So it's like a nine, ten, eleven, twelve triple. One, two, three. So again, uh, it's a totally different feel, but very, very cool, right? And then this is what I really love. This next little riff is super cool. Uh, that's going to get tied over into measure two and gets held for um, almost two beats. So uh, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. On six, we're going to play the open E again. And uh, now we have this really cool little... I'm hammering it. I think it's actually picked though, but I'll show you both ways and then you can decide whichever way that you would like to play it. Again, the timing will be more important than whether you pick it or you hammer it. Uh, so, th so we have the low open E, that's on, we said, six of the one, two, three, four, five, six. So what's going to be more important is that this A on the fifth fret hits with the downbeat of that, which is the third click. And here's what this looks like. It's just two groups of three. So two triplets, or you could count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, or uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're gonna go A to B. So you have the uh, fifth fret to the seventh fret. Then D, fifth fret of your A string, to G, fifth fret of your fourth string. There's going to be a bunch of different ways we can pick this. We'll look at it all in a minute here. Back to the D, and then E. So the first three notes, one, two, three, just A, B, D, that's pretty easy, right? A little bit tricky when you have to drop this first finger to get that uh, G to start the last beat. And then you come back to the D. So you have to kind of do this right from the D to the G back to the D so this finger just kind of drops down drops back you could bar it across if you're comfortable just leaving the finger barred you can totally bar it across if that feels awkward you may want to just kind of move it back and forth and then after you come back to that D we said it ended with the E so we have one two three four five six Look at a couple different ways to pick it and play it. That's it. That would go with the beat. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, with the click, triple it, triple it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now the open E would fall right before it. This is the last one. Uh, get the idea? And I think, again, you probably see the importance of making sure that A is on the beat. You could even skip the E, but it's important that A is on the beat. If, if you accidentally started the riff where the E fell on the downbeat, then it's going to throw everything off. And, um, and through all my years of playing, it's, timing is the most important thing, especially when you're talking about playing with a group of other musicians. Because, again, if... You know, if that A starts on the beat and you make a mistake and put the E on the beat, 
Uh, it's not going to line up. The drummer is going to be thrown off. The bass player is going to be thrown off. It's going to create a mess. So I'm always big for understanding what starts on the beat. And if we skip that low open E before it, who cares? That doesn't matter. But what does matter is that falls on the gun, 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 oh, no, with the click. Gun, 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 oh, no, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Sorry, that's what I was trying to count the six twice. <laughs> then we talked about... We have to backtrack to that. Okay, hold on. We'll put this whole riff here together. Uh, let's take a look at what we have all together. Here, let's leave the metronome at, at 90. So we said we're kind of on the slow side. But um, our first opening riff, one and two and three, four and one and two. Okay, that's where we are. So a very different feel, right, on that second half because it switches to 12-8, but we're still leaving the tempo the same, but it sounds like it slowed down. Um, so again, just a quick recap, recap of that, that my beat was still here, right, one and two, but when we get to that second part, triple it, triple it, triple it, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, or six twice, however you'd like to count it. And we're going one, two, again on three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then again on nine. I'm going to slow it down even slower, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and that's where we're playing the D minor seventh, on ten and twelve. And then it ties over, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, counted the six twice. Remember we said earlier counting the six twice is a little bit easier than trying to go 10, 11, 12, but again it can kind of get a little confusing because if you're counting six twice you can get mixed up where you are in the measure. Okay, uh, we're almost done this part of this tune. Uh, then it does it again, so then you go back to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, right. So guitar 1 still basically plays the same thing with the power chord, but guitar 2 goes... So, since we're only one guitar, I will try to, we'll just incorporate it together. So we said, when the guitar two first does this, um, we can put those same two notes right here and play E minor seventh, gives us the same sound. Then guitar two goes, but that would be the same as going, so I have my ninth fret of my third string and my tenth fret of my second string, same two notes, it's an E and an A. It's the same as the 14th fret, the strings 3 and 4, E and an A. And we're going to drop those back a whole step. So, now the trick is going to be, we're going to probably want to go, let's see, you know what, that's going to be too complicated. Here's what I say we do as one guitar. I say we just, I, I, this is what I might do. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, uh... You know what? Maybe coming and grabbing the 14th fret strings 3 and 4 to the 12th fret 3 and 4 might be easier as opposed to going I like that. So what if we do that? One, uh, one. of that. Uh, so this riff is the same both times. Uh, okay, uh, does that, hopefully that everybody's with me so far, that makes sense. Uh, let's add, let's add uh, one other thing here. Um, the, this riff is the same. We were going to talk about picking it and the different ways we could pick it because we have a few options. I believe that it's picked entirely if there is no hammer on, so you would pick the whole thing. Alternate picking, easy right, down, up, down, up, uh, sorry, down, up, down, up, down, up. So just, right, just alternate pick it. Um, again, if you've followed my other videos or you're a member of musiclearning.com and you, you, know, you know that I like music theory, I like to understand why things sound the way they sound and how they fit together and work in time. Um, the one thing about triplets, 
uh, triplet, 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 is because there's three notes in a beat, the first triplet would start with a down if you're alternate picking, the second triplet would start with an up. One, two, three, up, down, up, down, up. So you want to be aware if you're playing triplets that they're switching. So on this riff, you'd want to start that E with an up, because remember the A is the downbeat. Other options would be to uh, economy picket or natural picket. It's the same term used for two different ways of describing the same thing, which is basically you just find the if your pick's already headed in a direction, you keep doing it the same way. So the difference here would be uh, actually. It doesn't actually, it actually, alternate picking makes more sense in that one because of the way the pick is already going. The other option though we said, so maybe there's not as many options as I thought. Maybe it's really kind of comes down to, to, to two or maybe some combination of these two, but the other would be hammer it. So you play the open E, I'd still pick that with an up for sure because it's the last part of the beat. I'd down pick the A for sure because that's on the beat. Hammer the B. Oh yeah, so then if you hammered the B, now you could go down, down, because the pick is already in that position. And then you could come up, pick the D, hammer that E. That's an option too. So some people will find it easier to hammer. Others will find it harder. So it depends on where you're at in your playing and where you're at with your pick skills. Because it's a little tricky, that line. It's pretty fast at full tempo, right? Um, so you have to break it in little pieces. I think, uh, again, if you've watched my videos before, you know I'm all about breaking into pieces. Um, so I would start, if I'm alternate picking it, and if that's tricky, I would slow it down even more, right? Now because they're triplets, it's that G on the fifth, uh, fifth fret of the fourth string, that's the one that gives you uh, falls on the next beat. Triple it, triple it. So anyway, break it down like that, right? Little tiny pieces. And if you're following along in any of the stories I've been doing lately, I'm basically I'm practicing and you can kind of see how I practice. Uh, normally I would have the metronome on when I do the stories. I don't have the metronome on because I usually just typically use the metronome on my phone, but I'm using my phone to create the little stories. But I would normally have a Anyway, uh, that's about it. That's the two main parts of this riff. Um, I am going to teach the bridge, but I'm going to do it in a separate video, not a stream, just a regular video. And um, yeah, thank you guys for being in here. Uh, and we'll see you um, soon. MusicLearn.com is the site. Um, subscribe for more lessons. And uh, for the YouTube channel, turn on your notifications for more streams. And we'll see you soon. Thanks.